Today I am out of the studio and on the beach in the beautiful Bay of Fundy. I'm going to try painting out here, which is something totally new for me, so stick around. Hi guys, what's up? My name is Shada and right now Chris and I are in the Bay of Fundy. This is a Canadian national park on the East Coast and it's known for its amazing tides. So right now it's about five in the afternoon and we're on the beach and the tide is coming in and it's bringing all this really pretty fog with it and we're the only ones on the beach right now. Um, and it's kind of an amazing little spot. So I'm gonna sit on those rocks over there and I'm going to do a little watercolor painting. Now, I don't know anything, well, I'm not experienced in landscapes or in plain air painting, which is just outdoor painting, but I think that if you wanna paint something that you should feel that you can do it. So that's what I'm all about today. We're gonna take in this place and do a little watercolor. So I hope that you'll join me. What I wanna share with you today is the experience of being here in Fundy, as well as the experience of painting outside, which is something that is quite new for me. I rarely get away from the four walls of my studio, especially with my watercolor paints. Yes, I love journaling and doodling on an airplane or in a waiting room, but there's something about lugging the paints outside that can be a little intimidating. Uh, I myself don't like using a water brush, so that means that I have to bring my paint brushes and my little mason jar of water with me as well as the paints and today I'm using this little pocket set from Mungyo and I'm really impressed with the quality. They were an excellent price um, and the paints are professional quality uh, with beautiful pigment. I picked this set up at an art store in Halifax recently but I will be sure to link to the Amazon listing in the video description. Because I'm working outdoors and working on a subject that I'm not overly comfortable with, which is landscape, I quickly developed a few rules, I guess you could say, to help me be successful because of course I want this to go well. The first thing I did was work in a limited color palette. So you're going to see as the piece progresses that it's all sort of greens and blues and grays and not having to mix up a ton of colors, well that's just helpful because everything um, will go a little faster which is nice when you're outdoors, but it will also all blend really nicely. And then the second thing I did was that I'm allowing myself to abstract my forms a little bit. You can see that the trees are sort of stippled. They're not very detailed trees. They're just giving the idea of the trees. Um, and this is also something that sort of plays into my feelings about the Bay of Fundy. And there's something that's a little spooky about Fundy, I think. There's the fog and the gray, and it's sort of always windy and you can hear the wind and the waves. And Chris and I had visited four years ago on our way out to Prince Edward Island for the first time. And when we came here, it was May and the park had just opened and it was very spooky. We were almost the only campers in the park and it was quiet except for that wind in the trees. So I wanna capture a little bit of that spooky feel and uh, working within one color palette and abstracting my forms, I think it will all work together to help me create a piece that I'm comfortable painting, but that also captures the feeling of this place. Now for me, working in a limited color palette doesn't mean that I'm only using two or three paints in the pocket set. I'm taking advantage of all the colors I have there. And the rocks is a really good example of that. They're full of many colors. They're brown and gray, but they're also purple and red and yellow. Um, and that is so beautiful. I wanna capture a bit of that. So I am doing that here. And you can see in the rocks, I've highlighted some of those reds and purples. Uh, so that is just a detail that I wanted to point out. So limited color palette, yes, but still picking up and using all the colors that you have available to you. The gray of the sky here is full of, uh, well, maybe not full of, but there's hints of red and blue. It's more than just gray. And that's because I want to use and pick up the colors that I see here in this beautiful landscape. 
And this beautiful, fundy landscape had changed a lot since we came here four years ago in May. This time we were here in August and it was mostly sunny and hot and there were lots of people around and we were hiking and picnicking and swimming. So it was just interesting for us to see how much a place could change, mostly just with the presence of more people. And, um, you know, not only is fog and mist kind of have that eerie quality, but anyone who's been to a tourist town before the tourists get there, I'm sure you know exactly what I mean. Um, that spooky eeriness is uh, just sort of unavoidable when all the businesses are empty and everything's super quiet. So yeah, Fundy had changed a whole lot and we enjoyed a lot of hiking this time around that we didn't have the chance to do a couple years back but um, also the process of painting. You can see me adding the water here. This is something I've always wanted to do more of in Canada's national parks, is sit down and paint and really be in the place and enjoy it. And you can see how the water and the fog, the sky, it's not blending exactly, but all the colors kind of work together. And that is really helping me out as I paint something that I'm not super comfortable with. I'm adding a little more detail to the trees. Just coming back here now that the first layer has dried and adding a little bit more dark paint to that silhouette. And then that's it, I'm all done, ta-da! <laughs> this is my Bay of Fundy National Park souvenir painting and I really enjoyed sitting on the beach and painting it. This time around in Fundy, I captured some of that ghostly quality of the landscape while also enjoying a lot of summer fun in this beautiful park. Painting on the beach, I can't recommend enough, although I definitely need to get a little easel set up. You can see my water is like tucked behind my butt. I'm sitting on a rock. Sitting on the rock was fine, but I need to get a little proper easel so that my paper towel and brushes and water and everything can be contained. If you have a recommendation, please let me know. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching today, guys. I'm gonna end the video with a little bit of fun behind the scenes stuff from our camping trip. So we're just coming up off of the beach and it was so damp down there. It was basically 10 degrees cooler and it was so clammy that it just made you feel like you were freezing cold. Living inside a cloud, I decided I would not care for it. Um, so we're super ready to go back to our campsite and have a fire, but um, the beach is sort of behind us now and it was just so cool to be down there. And it was really nice to have done a little painting and experienced it in that way. Let's do this. We just hiked into the falls and it's really sunny, but it's also really rainy and we've got some really big sandwiches. <laughs>